His blood has paid the price. Most beautiful sacrifice. So we could be welcome here. When we're dead in sin. So helplessly lost within. Welcome, everybody, all of you beloved, beautiful people. It's good to see some of you here that haven't been here, and it's great to see some of you here for the first time or returning after some years. Welcome to this First United Methodist Church where all means all, no matter what, no exclusions, and you're welcomed in the heart of love and Christ. I hope this day gives you some peace, Enjoy 
and a memory of what is your center. Good morning. The flowers this week have been donated by Joanne Wilson in honor of her mother and sister. And we thank you, John. The church council will meet, be meeting the 14th, which is Thursday of this week at 6 p.m. and it's an open meeting. We will celebrate the pledges received this coming Sunday during the, excuse me, during the service. If you haven't already given them to the church office, please bring your pledge cards to put into the offering plate. And there will be an ice cream social after church. Yay. Men's group meets uh, November the 19th at noon at McMenamin's. Our United Women in Faith's World Thank Offering Meeting is Saturday, November 23rd at 11 p.m. Well, I read p.m., I'm sorry, <laughs> 11 a.m. Please sign up to let us know you're coming. It will be a potluck with an international flair, so bring a dish that reflects your ancestry or special interest, and you save your saved up coins in those little boxes or checkbook. All women are welcome to join in this meeting. Begin. Beginning December 1st, we will begin an Advent Bible study after church called Christmas Letters. Please sign up on the sheets in the narthex. Also, if you would prefer a class at a different time, please let the church office know. And if enough are interested, we will make that happen. December, December 7th will be our United Women in Faith Christmas brunch at 11 a.m. It will be a Thelma Guffey's home. Bring a dish to share and a modest but meaningful gift. Please sign up and let us know you're coming. At this meeting, we will vote on how to distribute our gifts to support local charities so it is an added joy while we prepare our hearts for the one Christmas gift that blesses us every day. All women are welcome to this meeting. Forms are in the North X for poinsettia dedication. The poinsettias are $15 a piece. Please place your form and check in the offering box in the North X with poinsettia in the menu. Envelopes will be provided if you prefer checks. The poinsettias will be on the stage starting December 15th. December 12th, Thursday at 3 p.m., we will be decorating our sanctuary trees. Please plan to join us for this family community event. We will have a traditional Christmas Eve candlelight service at 7 p.m. with wassail and treats in the narthex. Picture time starts at 6 p.m. We still have a few items left from our holiday market uh, place that we had Friday and Saturday of this week. They are for sale. Why don't you buy a plate of cookies for your table? Donna has agreed to make one of her wonderful cheesecakes and you can buy tickets to win, drawing at noon. Please refer to your bulletin insert for more announcements. However, we do have one more announcement and our lovely Julie David has a birthday today. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Julie. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Both of our songs today are in the uh, green hymnal if you want to join us. And our first one is uh, 3112.
each other with the peace of Christ. Would you please stand and repeat with me the call to worship? As a deer longs for flowing streams, so longs our soul for you, O oh God. Our soul serves for God, for the living God. We become cast down and disquieted within ourselves by the world. We rise up. Let's repeat the opening prayer. Lord, in a word where many know despair, you raise up Jesus to show us the way and to give hope for humanity and renewal to the earth. Continue to strengthen and unify our church, reminding us every day that nothing and no one takes the place of you as the center of our lives. In our struggles against the forces of divisiveness, and hate in the world, where violence against creation and humanity sometimes obscures our hope of the new life, raise us up to you to be your disciples of faith, hope, and love. This we pray in the name of the risen Lord and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our script. Thank you. Our scripture today is from Ruth, the third chapter, verses 1 through 5, and the fourth chapter, <clears throat> verses 13 through 17. One day Naomi said to Ruth, My daughter, it's your, my duty to ensure your security and fulfillment and make sure you are provided for. And Boaz, whose workers you have been following, is our closest relative. Tonight he'll be winnowing grain on the threshing floor. Wash up and put on perfume and dress in your finest clothes. Then go down to the threshing floor, but don't let him know you're there until he has finished eating and drinking. When he goes to sleep, watch to see where he lies down. Then go and uncover his feet and lie down with him. He'll tell you what to do next. Ruth replied, I will do as you tell me. So Ruth and Boaz were married, and their union 
My God enabled Ruth to conceive, and she gave birth to a child. Then the women of the village said to Naomi, Praise be the God who has not abandoned you, but provided you with yet another Redeemer. May the child's name be remembered through all of Israel, and give you renewed life and support when you are old. For your daughter-in-law who loves you and has proven better than seven of her own children could ever have been, has given birth to him. Naomi took the child into her lap, and she became his caretaker. And Naomi's neighbors named the child, saying, A son has been born to Naomi. We will call him Obed. And Obed begot Jesse, and Jesse begot David. And the book of Hebrew, chapter 9, verses 24 through 28. For Christ didn't go into a holy place made by human hands, a copy of the real one, Christ went into heaven itself and now appears on our behalf in the presence of God. High priests of old went into the most holy place every year with the blood of an animal, but Christ didn't make a self-offering more than that one time. Otherwise, Christ would have had to suffer many times ever since the creation of the world. But now that the consummation is upon us, Christ has appeared once for all to remove sin through self-sacrifice. It is appointed that everyone must die once and then be judged by God. In the same way, Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many, and then will appear a second time, time not to deal with sin, but to save those who are waiting for Christ's appearing. The word of life.
249th birthday to the United States Marine Corps, may the principles and honor continue for the next 250 years. Lord, in your love. Jack offers a joy happy birthday to you, <laughs> to, to the Marines. We're all there for the next 248 years. Lord, in your love. And as a concern, Nancy Dick offers, my friend Barb has an infection in the bones of her feet, meaning she has to stay off them all the time. She lives alone, so this is a real problem for her. Lord, be with Nancy. Lord, in your love. Amen. Joe offers a prayer for survival for Penny and, and, and a good <laughs> Wait, hold on. I can do it all by myself. Prayer for Sus uh, Penny's 100% in total healing after her shoulder, shoulder surgery coming up this Thursday. Wednesday. Yeah. What? Wednesday. Wednesday. Please, Lord, forgive me. Lord, in your love. So our song today is uh, Scars in Heaven, and um, partly we chose this because we didn't have the drums, so we were working uh, thinking of what are some songs that we can do without the, the drums, um, that, and we did not have Julie, yes, yes, I'm sorry, and uh, so we were like, well, we're going to do 
um, the three of us, just accompanied by uh, Michael today, as something different that voice is doing. <laughs> Would have put off all the things I had to do. I would have stayed a little longer, held on a little tighter. Now what I'd give for one more day with you. Cause there's a wound here in my heart where something's missing. And they tell me that it's gonna heal with time But I know you're in a place Where all your wounds have been erased And knowing yours are healed are healing mine The only scars in heaven They won't belong to me anything but easy you picked up your share of scars along the way but now you're standing in the sun you fought your fight the race is run the pain is all a million miles away the only stars in
offerings and tithes now. as a reflection of our love and gratitude to you. We give trusting in your provision. Multiply these offerings, Lord, to further your works, bringing hope, healing, and a deepening relationship with you to all people. Bless our giving, that it may glorify your name and extend your grace to all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our scripture is from Mark, the ninth chapter, verses 24 through 28. The child's parent answered, I do believe. Help my unbelief. Jesus, on seeing the crowd rapidly gathering, reprimanded the unclean spirit and said, Mute and deaf spirit, I command you, come out of this child and never again return. It screamed and threw the child into convulsions. Then it came out. The child became like a corpse, and many said, the little one is dead. But with assistance from Jesus, the child stood up. When Jesus arrived at the house, the disciples asked him privately, why is it that you would not expel us? Why is it that we could not expel it? The word of, the life. Word of life. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, um, I'm a manuscript preacher. I write it all down as if I'm going to say what's in here. Um, sometimes I do. I, um, I don't want to be up behind the pulpit separate from you all anymore. So if you can't see me and you hate this, let me know. Um, God knows I never pretended to memorize everything I say. It's been quite a week for us all, right? I've listened to fellow clergy, family, and friends who are grief-stricken, terrified, and stunned, as well as some who are joyous, relieved, and grateful. 
So this message today is not so much about the scriptures that were read, but an answer to the calls and Zooming meetings and emails and visits I've had from such a diverse and, and compassionate and sincere group of people. I'm gonna begin with this reminder. Every single individual on this planet sees and hears and perceives differently from their own lens that's created from their experiences of the world and how it has affected them. So today, and any day, that you choose to listen to any message from anyone, keep that in mind and take what you need and leave the rest. As we continue in relationship with each other and those outside these doors, I urge you to keep in mind that we are all called to be wise as serpents and gentle as doves. In Bishop Cedric's message this week, our bishop, he said, your political persuasion does not matter to me. What matters is your commitment to Christ, your willingness to care for one another, your quest to be well, end quote. And I stand with our bishop on that. And, of course, I add, what matters to me is that we are clear that this church is an inclusive community where all means all, period. What matters to me is that anyone of any lifestyle, political or cultural persuasion or ethnicity is safe in this church and hopefully in our country. What matters to me is that regardless of how we differ, we treat each other with respect and sensitivity, compassion and awareness of the bridge of Christ Jesus that connects us and we remember that regardless of whether we grieve now or celebrate these days, the one truth has not and will not change, and that is that Christ is the center of our lives, and the grace of God is sufficient. Amen? Amen. Okay. Sometimes, though, that means that what we fear most is that which we may need to face so we can change it or maybe change ourselves, who knows. Some of you are aware that I completed my coursework this week. <laughs> Ironically, my favorite part ended up to be the section I dreaded the most, the section of evangelism. <laughs> I dreaded that section because the thought of accepting Jesus, of knocking on doors and, accept, and convincing people to accept Jesus as their savior brings me feeling similar to the thought of willingly swallowing raw fish guts <laughs> or trying to pretend that I'm a submissive human. I just can't do it. So while we're talking about fear or dread, and in case you feel the same way I used to feel about evangelism, I'm going to share a few tools that will help us commit even more deeply to an evangelistic lifestyle because light or dark, sad or joyous, that's what it takes to move us along the path and the railroad of God. So let's first talk about what evangelism is not. It's not about prophesying doom. It's not about marketing, converting, convincing, bullying, or coercing. Evangelism is not even about <coughs> inviting people to church. It's not something we do. Evangelism, through Christ's example, is something we be. It's something we be. It's more relational than confrontational. It's prophesying and prayerfully manifesting hope. 
It invites us to a community-based lifestyle rather than a solitary lifestyle. Evangelism is behaving or interacting with folks in such a way that invites them to grow in relationship to God because what they experience in us will be what leads them where they go. It is exhibiting love and acceptance in such a way that by example invites people into this community that is based in love and committed to acceptance. It is practicing radical hospitality to the known and the unknown. It's inviting people to experience God through Christ by who we be. You'll not believe this, but one of my favorite quotes is, preach often, use words when necessary. You see people in the darkness and in the lightest times. For us, evangelism is the best form of relating through love, acceptance, presence, and being in relationship with people where they are. It's always the answer. So you may ask, how do we be all that? Really great words, sounds really good, but what happens when we walk out those doors? How do we be with someone who is foreign to us? Not just by ethnicity or culture, but by differing life experiences, lifestyles, sexuality, or political views. Christ answers us when he called the little children to him and asked us to be more like them. When he asked the sick, what do you want? In every encounter, Christ was consistent. He met people where they were, young, old, male, female, Jew, Greek, it didn't matter. He met them on the road or in a closed room, in a crowd or on the mountaintop. No judgment, no right or wrong involved. These days in United Methodist missions, we strive for cultural humility rather than cultural competence. A study was done on the difference in service given by people before and after they passed a competency test. The results showed that service decreased when they were labeled competent. It's handy for, hmm, says Lee. I can hear her over here. She's like, what? <laughs> hmm. It's not about assuming what other needs. Servanthood is about empowerment. It's not about control. It's not assuming what others need based on the lens through which we see, but listening so we know, know the lens through which they're seeing and meeting them there. It's God, it's our job to be God's hands and feet. It's God's job to make the changes. The outcome doesn't belong to us through responsibility or credit. Evangelism is being the invitation to God's grace and God's invitation and that is being a servant or disciple of Christ. And you might wonder, how did we go from evangelism to servanthood? Well, do you know why? Why? Because evangelism is servanthood. You can't have one without the other. If you're in service through Christ, you are evangelizing. That's what it's all about. So there's five things that help me remember this stuff. Be intentional. That is, be invested. Don't give up five minutes before the miracle, guys. We may never know how God uses our intentions. It's not just our business. It's none of our business. <laughs> Trust God. We do the best we can, and we get out of God's way for the outcome. 
Be relational. Shift from being inwardly focused to being outwardly focused. Practice cultural humility. Be grateful that we all have so much more to learn no matter how much we think we know. Remember that without relationship, people become mer merchandise and Christ falls away, replaced with the false and counterfeit gods of money, greed, property, power, prestige, judgment, entitlement, and the list goes on. Three, be the hands and feet and voice of Jesus. The value of community is that it is the vehicle through which we can serve in ways that may not be accessible to us without it or alone. For example, this weekend, our United Women in Faith, from the crafts they made throughout the year, through our holiday market, dispersed over $2,000 to 21 different local charities. I don't believe that any one person could have done that. But together, we can do much. Four, be humble. Know that none of us will wake up tomorrow being a perfect example of lifestyle evangelism just because we know these tools. It takes courage to be willing to be transformed as Christ transforms others through us. And lastly, five, be you, people. I'm here to tell you from experience that people who have lost everything and are seeking a spark of hope or just their next meal will spot fakes before you even see them. Be you in confidence. You were created to be exactly who you are. No matter what you have been told or others have have believed or you have come to believe about yourself, the truth is you are a masterpiece creation of God. And that is nothing to shake a stick at people. And it's nothing to hide. So I say no matter how you feel at any given time, get on board. It's not the time <laughs> to back up, hide, or wait. This is the time to get on board. The job is not done, and it's not hopeless. And I've heard people talking about end times. If this is end times, then it's, that doesn't mean it's time to curl up in a ball and forget about everything. It's the time to get on board, get on the train, where Christ is the engineer. Am I yelling? Sorry. <laughs> Open up to the possibility of evangelism. And if you believe you're doing as much of you as you can, do a little more. And if you believe you've surrendered, surrender more. And let me know if you think the church could be doing something that it's not doing. I will work on that. I want to know what, your, what you want from your church. It's your church. I serve you. I'll lead you if necessary. Maybe put you in time out if I need to. <laughs> like I could do that. You are blessed people, and you have the strength to survive anything through Christ. So again I say, people get ready. There's a train coming. It's not just a Sunday train. It runs every day. 24-7, 365, and it is eternal. We're on that train, and Christ is the engineer.
must make this run successful from the cradle to the grave. Watch the hills, the curves, the fills, and the tunnels never fall. stand and join and take my life and let it be.
this place blessed by God, who provides everything we need, who teaches us to notice the needs of our neighbors, and who inspires us to live in God's abundance of grace as we share with one another God's love and acceptance, compassion, and freedom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.